What is the Catholic view on Mary? Because I think it's a huge point of contention. It's something that still makes me a little bit uncomfortable, I'm going to yeah. be honest. Catholic doctrine for sure teaches not just asking Mary for intercession, but praying to Mary and even worshiping Mary. Nothing can bind the conscience except for the word of God. Nothing has ultimate authority except yes. for the word of God. The Bible literally says there is one mediator between us and God, the man Christ Jesus. But that would be my issue with praying through Mary is that we don't see her as a mediator in scripture. Mary is the mother of God, right? She must have given birth to God. Souls after life continue to make intercession. Where do you get the basis though that souls continue to make intercession once they're in heaven? Where in the Bible, George? Where in the Bible does it say this? Okay, what Catholics and Protestants believe about Mother Mary. This was a debate between Ali Stuckey, which I'm just starting to learn about, and then I think his name is George Farmer. That's Candace Owens' husband. So they debated. He's a Catholic. Ali Stuckey is a Protestant, and they're going to talk about Mary. There's a lot of other clips from this podcast, but I want to react to this one. Maybe I'll react to more in the future from this. Let me know in the comments down below. But let's watch this together and see what is the Catholic view on Mary? Because I think it's a huge point of contention. A lot of Christians are like, you guys pray to Mary, you ask for intercession, which is a valid argument and a valid concern. It's a concern I have for sure when it comes to the Catholic doctrine, among many others. But that's a whole nother video that I have. I'll probably put that down below. My Catholics versus Catholics compared to Christians. Well, let's watch this and react. I would say that the Sola Scriptura thing actually was one of the easier things for me to get over when studying the Catholic faith. And I thought it was a very good argument that it actually like showed show me where in the Bible that you see this. And the answer is I couldn't find it. One of the things that was not so easy and is not, I don't even want to make it sound like it's past tense for me, um, Mary, Virgin Mary, uh, praying on the rosary, trying to understand what the Catholic faith believes. Well, we're not praying to her, which is the veneration of Mother Mary. It's something that still makes me a little bit uncomfortable, I'm going to yeah. be honest. Um, so I don't know where Candace Owen stands between, I don't think she's Catholic, I don't know if she's Christian or not, I don't watch much of her content, but she says, she's saying like, I have an issue with this. I don't understand this whole praying to the rosary. And a lot of Catholics in my comments and a lot of Catholics watch my content, they're gonna say, we don't pray to Mary, but in catechism, you literally get taught to pray to Mary. It's in the doctrine. So you can say as a Catholic, you don't pray to Mary or you don't believe in it, but the Catholic doctrine for sure teaches not just asking Mary for intercession, but praying to Mary and even worshiping Mary, which again, I know Catholics say, we don't do that, but the doctrine does teach that. Um, Ali, do you feel the same about this? Yeah, and now I would say I'm not rehashing this little scripture thing because I know that oh, no, we're, you can, if we're you want to bookend something. No, we're yeah, yeah, yeah no, you're we're, fine. we're moving past that. But it is, it's not that Protestants don't believe that we can't deduce things like you said that okay, it doesn't say in scripture only by scripture alone, just as it doesn't say, well, here is the Holy Trinity. We do believe in deducing, we believe in theologians, we believe in creeds, we believe in councils in a similar way that the Catholic Church does. It, kind of, but we would say nothing can bind the conscience except for the word of God. Nothing has ultimate authority except yes. for the word of God. And that, and also we disagree with some of the deductions that the Catholic church has made, one of them being Mary. And I'm sure that George will tell us what he believes the biblical <laughs> support to be of, of Mary. Um, but I would say- Good luck. Spoiler alert, there is none. That's the spoiler alert. There is no scriptures that say we should pray to anyone. In fact, the Bible literally says there is one mediator between us and God, the man Christ Jesus. So we don't have Mary as a mediator in the Bible we're talking here and in the, and in the Orthodox Christian faith. We don't have a mediator. We don't pray to the disciples. We don't pray to saints that have passed away. And you might, Catholics would say, well, they're not dead. We're not praying to dead people or communicating with the dead, which would be like necromancy, which is vehemently prohibited in scripture, but they would say they're still alive in heaven. They're not dead, but physically they are dead. Physically they are dead. And so, yeah, the Christian Bible does not teach to inter ask for anyone for intercession or to pray to saints that are physically dead. Yes, they don't. They say that they don't worship Mary. You say that you don't pray to Mary, but you're praying through Mary, mm -hmm. that she is kind of a mediator. And the, and the saints as well. Be, yes, because the they are, the and you can correct Feels me bad. if I'm misrepresenting you because I don't want to do that. But um, because of their proximity to God, basically they are kind of carrying our prayers to God and Mary 
being the mother of God has a special place, a special authority to do that. And of course, I believe that that is not just wrong, but I actually believe that that's blasphemous, that she has no divine authority. Yes, she's blessed in the sense of what an honor and what a privilege that she was a servant of God, that she was able to carry Jesus. But Jesus alone is our mediator. Yes. Um, he alone is our intercessor. He alone is who we pray to and through. And while Mary is in heaven, we don't believe that anyone is in heaven because of their proximity to God has any authority or ability whatsoever to carry our prayers to him. Um, really good. I'm new to her content, so I've only seen a little bit of it. I have some friends that really like her stuff. I really like the way she communicates. I think she communicated that precisely, clearly. And so I think she does a great job at communicating her point, taking the Protestant position, which you're like, what's a Protestant? We're Protestant. If you're an Orthodox Christian, you'd be considered a Protestant versus, you know, she's talking to someone who's a Catholic. So I think she really is strong on this. She's saying it clear. She's saying it bold. She's not afraid to step over that line and maybe be offensive with what the Bible says. And so I really like this whole interview and all the clips from it. And again, maybe I'll react to more, but... Uh, interesting. We just don't see that deduced in scripture. That would be a big difference. And I would say, now this could go against Catholic doctrine, but I there comes something very close to Mary worship, I would say in subsets of Catholicism, which is interesting because you hear Catholics say a lot, oh, look at all these Protestant denominations. There are a lot of subsets of Catholicism, even if they're not called Good different point. denominations. Um, so yeah, that's just an issue in general. But that would be my issue with praying through Mary is that we don't see her as a mediator in scripture. And I and I agree with that position, so I'm very happy. Candace says to her husband, oh, she says, I agree with that. Which it could be, it's really awkward for Candace being a mediator or like hosting this debate because they're labeling this as like a debate. So probably a little bit awkward for Candace being a mediator between, I'm guessing her friend and her husband, so. Let's keep watching. Happy to hear yeah. <laughs> your answer to that, because this has probably been my biggest hang up, to be honest with you. This is like Quiz the Catholic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so there was there was a phrase which I, I want to come back to, which I think was very uh, interesting, Ali, in what you just said, which is the mother of God. All right. And I, I would start by asking, is that your position? Mother of Jesus. And of course, I believe Jesus is the word and the word is God, John 1. And so I guess you could say, I guess I probably wouldn't typically say the phrase mother of God. I typically would say mother of Jesus. Mm. That's a very Where is he going with this? Interesting answer, I would say, because, um, and I'm going to get pretty uh, theological here kind of very quickly. So the Council of Ephesus in 431 defined Mary as the mother of God. And the reason that the Council of Ephesus, as one of the authoritative church councils, defined Mary as the mother of God was because it was facing the Nestorian crisis. Of now, I don't think it's wrong to say Mary was the mother of God because Jesus is God. For sure, 100% Jesus is God. I've done teaching after teaching about that in my verse by verse, definitively proving the Bible does teach Jesus is God. It's just kind of a weird way to say it, that Mary's the mother of God. We would say Mary's the mother of Jesus, as Ellie said. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know where he's getting at, but yeah, for sure. Time, I mean, I Jesus earlier. is God. The Nestorian crisis said, led by Bishop Nestorius, said that Christ was two persons and he was, he, it was two natures, mm -hmm. right, within Christ. It could not, and, and this was the whole, and I'm really abbreviating here, and there's a lot more literature written on this by much better people than me, um, but it is worth looking into this because, the, because basically what this was saying is that Christ was two, two natures, right? He was his human nature, and he was his divine nature. Mm -hmm. He's right? kind of going in circles, but I think he's trying to tell us why they prayed and to Mary or what the asked Mary for church intercession. eventually came to define was that Christ could not be two natures. He had to be one nature, right? Hypostatically uni unified, right? Which is what the oh, creeds, yeah, totally exactly. Because you cannot divide the nature of God, right? right? And in doing so, the church anathematized uh, Nestorius and excluded him from uh, communion with the Holy Mother Church. And the reason being was because, as I said, you're dividing the nature of God. And then there's a whole conversation about persons and how do you unify a person, et cetera, et cetera. These were the Christological debates that the church Come on, just tell us. Centuries. Why do you guys pray to Mary or through um, Mary or ask Mary for The reason the Council of Ephesus came up with Theotokos, mother of God, and defined this was because 
without saying that Mary was the mother of God, you left yourself open to the backdoor argument that effectively the nat- that again, she was the mother of Jesus. Right. She was not the mother of God. She was the mother of one of the persons mm. of Christ. Mm-hmm. So in that argument, right, G- Mary is the mother of God, right? She must have given birth to God, mm-hmm. right? And that is the reason that in the Catholic, that is one of the reasons. She's the second person of the Trinity, yes. Uh, not Correct. God the Father, Correct. but Correct. God the God-man. Yes. Correct, but in the same way... Still that, fully God, still so I Still fully see God, point. exactly. In the same way that you can't say that, like, humans, you know, humans are oh. mammals. This is way going around the question, because the question was, in the Bible, where where do we see this? You shouldn't even Dolphins try to do mammals. a metaphor for the Trinity, George. Well, no, 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 no. I'm saying, like... It's complicated. Of course it is. Of course it is. But you one wants to make sure that you're not trying to break out. Again, the it, it comes back to the natures conversation, right? You don't want to split the natures of Christ because that becomes the real issue. So Mary was the mother of God in confirming Christ's divinity, right? And again, this is like the Daily Wire and this is, we don't want to get you know into the fifth century Christological debates, but that was the reason that she was defined in that way. As a result, the church... For, for that reason, plus many others, would have argued that what is traditionally ascribed to God, which is called latria, right, um, is adoration. Latria is the full adoration of God, ascribed only to God. It can only be given to God. It is what is celebrated in the Mass. It is what is celebrated in adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. Um, dulia, which is a second stage, which is what will be described as veneration, can be ascribed to Mary. Now, what is actually described to Mary is hyperdulia, because she contains this unique position of being the mother of God. The saints are granted dulia, which is veneration. Hmm. And and the conversation around saints, for example, I would say is similar to like, you know, and I think this is the most applicable uh, metaphor would be like- George, where in the Bible? Right. You, we're you in the say Bible. That to Christian brothers Does it say we're supposed time. to pray like, to say for ask me, for please pray for me about this issue. Please pray for me about this topic. I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with sin, et cetera, et cetera. In the same way that we ask other Christians, brothers and sisters to pray for us, we are asking the saints. The, the Catholic worldview would say that doesn't death. stop at dead, at, yeah. at death. It, it continues afterwards, right? In the same way that, for example, like purgatory, which is a state of purification of the soul prior to entry. Which, which is not a Christian doctrine or a Christian belief. Protestants don't believe which, in. Which, correct, Protestants yeah. don't believe in. Um, that would that would be the same logic. We would say souls after life continue to make intercession like souls on this earth continue to ask for intercession. And where do you, get, that the, where do you get the basis, though, that souls continue to make intercession once they're in heaven? Where in the Bible, George? Where in the Bible does it say this? <laughs> Again, spoiler alert, it doesn't. That's the problem. The Bible doesn't teach this idea of when you go to heaven, you're praying, or you're in hell, you're praying for people, which, yeah, it there just are doesn't, several areas in the New Testament where people are saying, I mean, I can, I can definitely dig out some quotes for you if you like from, just give from us scripture, one. which talk about that. Um, again, coming back to our first point, because it is not singularly defined in scripture does not mean that the church cannot uphold it as a doctrine, right? So again, this comes back to the sola scriptura yeah, argument. Which is our whole disagreement. Which yeah. is part of the whole. Yeah, so not everything's in scripture. Scripture is not exhaustive. There's things that are outside of scripture that are still okay. They go in line. They're harmonious with the word of God. But when something goes against scripture, which praying to saints or Mary or asking them for intercession would go against scripture. Not only is necromancy, which is talking to the dead, prohibited, and they are physically dead, even though there could be in heaven, but also we have only one mediator, so we don't use them as mediators to God or the Father. So this is anti-biblical. It's not just extra biblical, it's anti-biblical. I'll disagree. Mm-hmm. Um, so the church itself has confirmed that, but there are plenty of places and I'm, you know, I'm gonna dig out yeah. some quotes. from. Show us one, if there's plenty, show us one. Where There are plenty of places where intercession are, is asked for, right, in the afterlife. Where? Yeah, I guess w- I would need one to of, see this. Well, I would say one of them, for example, is the parable of uh, the rich man and Lazarus. In Abraham's bosom. Exactly. No, right. this and is so not good. Case, Don't go there. And he does it. <laughs> he doesn't, but he is making intercession. The, the rich no. man is asking from hell that 
Abraham sends to his brothers and sisters, you know, testimony of his pain in hell, right? And Abraham says no, because he has the prophets and Moses. That doesn't mean that the option, that does not mean that he could not have done it, right? It just means that he decided not to in that circumstance, right? So That's a poor illustration. If you're using that to justify biblically praying to saints or asking them for intercession, terrible, terrible, terrible spot to use where a man's literally in hell saying, send somebody to my brothers to warn them and then saying that's making intercession. So that would also say if a Catholic's using that argument, that, that would say, so you're praying, so you're praying in hell. If you're in hell, you're praying for people. So it's just a very poor argument. You just can't get there from here. So again, the fact that petitions are being made in the afterlife is referenced Even in the parable. Even from hell? Is that, is, that a, is that a belief? That no, you I can wouldn't. I'm, pray I'm, to those I'm from using hell? that Well, that's why I'm not sure if that's a good example, because I don't think Catholic exactly. says you can pray to people from hell and they can intercede. No, it, I'm not saying that it does, but I'm saying yeah. that there is examples in the Checkmate. Bible. Checkmate. I'm sorry, bro. You lost this. Where you just lost. I'm sorry. Scripture tests the fact that people in the afterlife are making petitions, right? Now, whether or not that is... Yeah. From hell is not a Catholic position. Yeah. No. I would yeah, I guess I would just need to see the biblical support for that or where because you talked about how the count counts. Well there are also for example like get... there are testimony in, in again, you're not gonna use these because the apocrypha is not upheld, but in Tobit, for example, where life after death is attested to, uh in Sirach as well. These Which are, are not canon, canonized or not scripture. References. They're not biblical. Um, there are references in Hebrews to the fact that continuous offerings are being made mm -hmm. in heaven. On part of the of, on part of the priesthood, which is also, uh, yeah, Jesus the high priest is forever making intercession uh, yeah. in communion with how we as Catholics identify yeah. the mass, which is a continual offering, right? So there are several circumstances where the example of offerings in heaven being made, right, yeah. are attested to in Scripture, right? And so Mary is a super mediator because she is the mother of God. She has super authority in heaven to carry our prayers. She is, yes, she is the, as in her unique position. I just don't understand why would you go to Mary if you can go directly to Jesus? Well, Mary's going to bring our prayers to Jesus and he'll answer his mother, but just go straight to him. The veil's been torn. We've been given the power and the authority to boldly approach the throne of grace. Like it, it makes absolutely no sense. Why go to Mary? You can literally skip Mary and go directly to Jesus. Our relationship is not with Mary. The gospel is about Jesus bringing us now into relationship with the Father, giving us peace with God, and now we have a relationship with Jesus and the Father. Like, that's the gospel. So uh, why? Why? Why go to Mary? I don't understand. As mother of God. She is in a position, and of course, like, Catholics would also argue that, for example, this it's exhaustive. Why go to Mary? Where a woman is brought forth and she gives birth, right, to the one who will save the world. Um, this, this, there are plenty of examples of. That's course, not what it's Mary's saying, brother. I'm sorry. She's mentioned many times in the same way that Peter is mentioned more than all the other apostles put together in the Gospels. Mary is mentioned several times as Jesus's mother. She has a unique place at the foot of the cross. Um, her unique positioning is clear within Scripture, and again. This comes back to what I no, said it's about not. the mother of God and this being dogmatically defined in a church council, which, by the way, the Protestant church accepts the Council of Ephesus. It's not rejected. Um, so in all of these circumstances, Mary's unique position is upheld as yeah. hyperdulia. Yeah, so he ran around the topic. He didn't answer any of the questions. He didn't use the Bible for sure. The only example he gave was the rich man and Lazarus, which was an absolutely terrible example because it's literally a man in hell saying, please send someone to warn my brothers. It's not about intercession or prayer. So just the whole praying to Mary, if you're Catholic, let me know in the comments. If you're still watching this by the end, type amen in the comments so I know that you watched the whole video. But no, this is just anti-biblical. We don't pray to saints. We don't pray to Mary. We don't ask for intercession. If we're going to be biblical, we go straight to Jesus. It just makes sense. It's the clear, precise thing to do. It's the biblical thing to do. If you start trying to pray to saints and Mary, you're opening yourself up to familiar spirits. We know that witches use saints to pray to, to get intercession. It's all in the new age and the occult uses praying to saints. No, no, no. Don't open yourself up. Don't do it. 
Don't pray to Mary. Don't worship Mary. You can go directly to Jesus and you have authority and power to do that. Pray about becoming a partner with our ministry down below. You can monthly partner, one-time partner. We're live Monday with verse by verse and topical teachings. We just taught last week on breaking the power of lust. We're live on Tuesday with podcast guests. We're live on Friday with hangouts, prayer, all of that good stuff. And then we're nonstop posting videos on our YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.